When I was in foster care, I never knew when I would have to move. So I always had my suitcase ready to go. Then one day, I was adopted. My new parents opened their hearts and home to me. My parents cook my favorite breakfast for me every morning. My parents take me on trips I never thought I would go on. They gave me a home and an even better reason to use that suitcase. My parents aren't perfect, but they're perfect for me. Action. Hey, you guys, welcome to the Anna Lindsay Show, where I am your host. I'm here every Monday at 6 p.m. Central Standard Time, right here on Clark TV Network. I'm here in my studio today with some amazing ladies. Oh, my goodness. We are here talking about Break the Silence. It's a book from my guest. There are four authors who have come together and collaborated on sharing their stories about breaking the silence. Mm -hmm. Welcome, ladies. Welcome to Thank the you. show. Hello. I Thank love. You. Hello. Thank Hello. You. I love having you here. We've been talking. We've been talking behind the scenes. I've been, you know, talking and hearing about your stories and your mm -hmm. lives. Again, thank you for allowing me to be a part of your process. Uh, we're here today, and I, I want to go ahead and introduce my guest. I have Miss Apostle uh, Tess uh, Bonafani. Bethany. Oh, okay, that's okay. That's okay. That's okay. It happens all the time. Thank that's okay. you. <laughs> we have Tanya Jones. Yes. Yes. Uh, we also have Kim Blockman. And Gracie Gibson. Thank you. You're Thanks, welcome. ladies, Thank for you joining for me us. again. Thank you. So, you know, uh, Break the Silence is a book. Um, it is a book about what? It is a book about abuse um, and different types of abuse. Um, a lot of us don't realize that there's all different types of abuse. It, um, it just varies. So it's women collaborating, coming together, talking about breaking our silence for someone else to break their silence. Yes, that, that, that's awesome. And for you guys to come together, when you came, when I spoke with you about uh, sharing your story, mm -hmm. uh, I thought it was unique in design because you don't often see books collaborated. So there's there had to be a process with this, correct? <laughs> oh yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. And yes. I want to talk all of we're going to talk about it. Uh, but before I do, mm -hmm. I want to uh, introduce you guys uh, with the bios. Mm -hmm. I want the audience to know who you are as individuals. Amen. So give me. I'm just going to pull them up here. Let's see. There we go. I have Miss uh, Tanya Jones. Uh, well, before we do, uh, you, Miss Jones. Uh, Apostle Tess, mm -hmm. tell us who you are. Well, I am an apostle. Um, I am pastoring, um, overseeing two churches right now, um, which is in Lamar, Texas City, and also in League City. Um, and so I'm originally a BOI, born on the island okay. from Galveston, okay. and um, I graduated from Ball High, and so I am the mother of two children, Solomon and Tashana, and uh, the grandmother of Kamari and Zane. And so I'm a business owner, entrepreneur, um, an author, a speaker, um, and I also pastor as well, and I do ministry. Awesome. Amen. Yes. So, yes. Yes, when we first met your spirit, I just loved it. It's like we instantly connected. My God, thank I, you. I started with you as well because you're the visionary of this mm -hmm. project. God gave it to you, yeah. correct? Yes. And yes. the ladies came and, yes. and came on board. So yes. thanks for starting that off. I wanted them to know who you were with this. Thank you. Uh, Miss Jones, Tanya Jones is here. She's the author of the book as well. Uh, she has sent in a bio. Can I go ahead and read your bio? Yes. Okay, great. It says, I, Tanya, Tanya Jones, and others have a story to tell called her your story in particular in the in the book is 
Hurting little girls become hurt women. Mm -hmm. That God has put God has put on my heart to inspire others to tell their truths, no matter who don't like it, mm. family, fam, friends, etc. Because it helps you get out of what you're in. Finally, helps yeah. you. Mm -hmm. uh, and be delivered from your pains. You're delivered from hurts, regrets, and choices you've made along the way. Mm -hmm. In hope, it gives you hope, sense of clarity, and aspects. Uh, you also said that it, it's happening to others as well. This is why you yes. wrote, wanted to write your, your portion of the book, because it is happening to others as well. Yeah. Yes. Uh, you wanted to help them uh, get set free so, it don't have to, so they don't have to have it weighed on their heart as much. Uh, it helps tell them tell their truth. Uh, not to keep it all balled up inside. And uh, you said that you are a minister, an elder, mm -hmm. mother of five. Yes. The children's are uh, Charles uh, Johnson. Help me with the name. I, Charles Johnson, Aisha Otis, Okay. Kiara Mobley, Shakandra Sims, Dion Hayes. All right. Beautiful names there. You are a wife and... Yes. Who's your husband? My husband's name is George Jones Sr. Okay. You have 12 grandchildren. Yes, oh, 12 okay. beautiful grandchildren. Yes. You said you're under the leadership of the Hind Closed Doors International Ministry. Mm -hmm. yes. uh, your apostle is mm -hmm. Apostle Tess. Yes. Where you uh, ministered the mm -hmm. word at the uh, school. No, it's called the Shoals. The, the, the Shoals of Texas, Texas City. Texas City. The mm -hmm. Shoals of Texas City. As well as a leader, uh, you do leadership training. Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm one of, one of the teachers of the, uh, we have, a, Pastor Tess have a, a, a school called, uh, Behind Closed Doors. Behind Closed Doors. Behind Closed Doors? Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. Leadership training. Leadership training. Okay. Okay, so you're pretty active there. Yes, I am. <laughs> 12, kids, 12 grandbabies, yes. Yes. You, 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 you know how busy you can get. Thank you for sharing that. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Now, I have uh, Kim uh, Blockman. Yes. And mm -hmm. Kim, can I go ahead and read your sure. bio and share who you are? Absolutely. Okay, Break the Silence is a book. I was invited to contribute to and share part of my personal story. Despite initial hesitation, a divine prompting by God led me to share my experience with a particular focus on women who may have encountered similar trials or have connections to those who have. Mm -hmm. My earnest prayer is that this book will serve as a source of inspiration and blessings to women empowering them to find the courage to break their own silence. Mm -hmm. I am Kim Blockman, a proud mom to Destiny and Trinity. Mm -hmm. I am a certified life coach, and in February 2022, I earned the title of becoming a board-certified Christian counselor. Beyond family, I enjoy active involvement. I enjoy active Involvement in my church, brisk walk, walks, uh, reading, and uplifting and encouraging those in need. Thank you for your support and for joining in on sharing Break the Silence. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Thank you. Awesome. We're going to talk all about that. Last but not least on the bio, I have Miss Gracie Gibson. Hi, Gracie. Hello. <laughs> okay, we're going we're gonna, to uh, uh, go ahead and share your bio as well. Uh, we must be set free from things of the flesh, uh, our earthly bodies, and, renew, and be renewed in our minds. We can only do this through the power of God's word. So, uh, say, sacrifice. Sacrificed by his power. Uh, that is sanctified by his power. Excuse me. Sanctified by his power. His presence and his redeeming grace. Saint, sanctified so that you are holy and without blame as you give the praise to God. I am a mother of two boys. Men now, you say. Yes. <laughs> Brian and Aaron. Yes. My mom is still living, praise God. Amen. Yes, that's, that's awesome. I have one brother and one sister. Yes. 
I have chosen to live for God and seek after the things of God. Mm -hmm. Putting his book, to, putting this book together with the other authors was an honor. We all have a story to tell how and what God did for us and how he set us free. Mm -hmm. Yes, we do. Yes. And you also say, be blessed. Mm -hmm. That was sweet. Yeah. That was sweet. Amen. All right. You guys, you guys are, you know, I, again, I, I feel privileged being a part of your, your journey and your story. And um, we're going to talk about it, uh, audience. We're going to talk about breaking the silence and uh, the different uh, trials and the things that real people go through. This is yes, not exactly. anything new. Every, you know, people yes. are have experienced um, some form of abuse and pain on yes. different levels mm -hmm. um, all, all throughout their life. No one's exempt. Yes. Right. Is, no one's That's exempt right. from this, right. uh, you know, whatever it is. But right now, we're going to, you know, go ahead and share uh, the, the testimonies and the stories. But before I do, you guys, you know about my word game. Yeah. You yes. know about my word game. <laughs> Being that we have a few of us, I want to get to more of, of the content of why we're here, but I do want to know, uh, I'm going to give you one word, okay. as we said before, okay. one word, and you tell me the first thing that comes to mind. And Tess, let's go ahead and just, Apostle Tess, let's start with you. Okay. The word is purpose. Mm. Mm. Making a difference in other people's lives mm. um, is my purpose. It's making a difference in other people's lives. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's awesome. Mm -hmm. What about you, Tanya? What? Purpose. What's, what's the first thing that comes to mind when you hear the word purpose? Purpose is the, uh, to me, is the reason why we're here. Mm -hmm. uh, what we should be doing in our purposes and how we should be doing it and who leading us in our purposes. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. I like that. I mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. What about you, Kim? Oh my, they took some of the things that I was going to say. <laughs> but that's okay, that's okay. I think purpose also is when we are in tune with what God is telling us or, or having us to do without without the rejection, without overthinking, without mm -hmm. asking a hundred questions. Oh, yes. Just walking into the purpose oh, that yeah. he has for you. Yeah. That's good, that's yeah. good. Just Finally owning right. it and going. I think that's the way he wants us to move. Right. I don't think he's yes. upset about us when yeah. we're trying to get there. Exactly. Right. But eventually, I think that's what he expects. What exactly. do y'all think? Yes. Yes. I think that's what he expects. Yes. That was good. <laughs> what about you, Gracie? What is purpose to you? Purpose to me is uh, like driven. Mm -hmm. Driven. Uh, what you're driven like to accomplish. Yes. Mm -hmm. And fulfill. Amen. And when you accomplish and fulfill something, especially when it's driven something inside of you. Mm -hmm. uh, I always like to use an example. An example would be like being led by the Spirit of God to be moved mm -hmm. to fulfill that purpose that's driven mm -hmm. in you. With mm -hmm. what, what they need to come out. Mm -hmm. Awesome. That was great. Yeah. That was great. Now, this is going to go alongside of purpose, but the reason why I chose this is because we have been hearing a lot about success and the word success lately. Have you have you noticed that? Mm -hmm. It's like yes. people are, are seeking and using that uh, mm -hmm. that word. I don't want to call it a buzzword, but it just seems it's like it's like buzzing. to me. Right. Yeah, it's buzzing around. What is success? They're just striving for success. Exactly. They're wanting mm -hmm. success. Right. So, again, what is success to you? <laughs> success means to me is um, going after the things that, you know, you feel that you are supposed to accomplish um and let me say that because in, in when i was younger success mean chasing after it was a whole different aspect for me it was like chasing after the business chasing after the money chasing yes. after. Yes. but now that i have gotten the wisdom of god and i've grown spiritually yes. um that i understand that success is not about the money it's not about the business it's not about how many of um and chasing after it it's basically just being successful in the things that god has set forth for mm -hmm. you to accomplish mm -hmm. and that's just everybody still can stay in their lane yes but it's about being successful 
successful in what God has given to you. I agree. And that's exactly what success means to me. I agree. Yes. I agree. And I, I love that the fact that you said that there is uh, a, a, a groin to it. was a phase. You yeah, know, there right. was a stage mm -hmm. to a development to it. Mm -hmm. Because it does. I yeah. think it does. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Success. Success to me means walking in the purpose that God has given you. Not... You yourself, mm -hmm. you're coming out of you're coming out of self, mm -hmm. and you're going into the person who God wants you, you to be. Successful. I didn't say who I want to be. Mm -hmm. I said who God that's wants me to be. That's right. right. That's successful. Yes. <laughs> yeah. We all share that. Don't we? <laughs> <laughs> Kim, I would say the same thing. Um, I think that everybody has different successes, though, and just because that person over there may have this this huge success of having all the glamour and the money and all this, and another person may have another type of... I just think whatever God has for you mm -hmm. is for you. Mm -hmm. I, I just think that we got to get out of the... But they're over there doing that. And mm -hmm. it's, why are we worrying about what they're doing? Mm -hmm. I'm happy that they're doing mm -hmm. it, but that might not be the road that God has chosen for me. So I think that everybody's success is different, and I think when we just focus on what God wants us to do, then we will get and we will reach that success that He has for us, not necessarily the one that we want for ourselves. Exactly, yeah. exactly, and yeah. I and I, I'm glad you said that. Be, as far as the comparison, yeah, mm -hmm. we do that. A lot. Yeah, the, yeah, the comparison because the deal is, and we all know this, the deal is your grace in life, and I like to say it, you know, your grace in life, your gifts in life mm -hmm. are, are what he wants for you. You will not be able to carry the same weight, yes. responsibility, yes. Yes. mental, emotional, yes. be able to carry the, yes. the assignment yes. out That's right. the way someone else would doesn't mean it's any better. Yes. Because you can have, you know, someone that's a stay-home mom be able to whip that yeah, up, yeah, man, yeah. I tell you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> or right. or exactly. even some of my, I mean, I'm not a, uh, I, I can't cook, but, you know, you know, I know some cook cooks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, right. know, you don't yeah. want me in the kitchen. Yeah, right, right, yeah. Try right. to act like I'm a cook. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. That's, that's what we do, man, because I like to sit there and, and get a good meal. Right. Okay. Exactly. <laughs> Thanks for sharing that. Gracie, success. Success is for me like starting starting at the beginning mm. and running all the way to the finish line. And that is like when Amen. Paul says in the Word of God to fight the good fight of faith. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. That's where my success is like I want to fight that good fight, even though we hit obstacles or we hit challenges mm -hmm. that I'm going to run like a runner to the finish line till mm -hmm. I'm finished. Accomplishing what I need to do. Thank that you. is amazing. amazing. That was good. Amen. We're on fire here, ladies. <laughs> so let me go ahead and uh, go into more of the content of why we're here. Mm -hmm. uh, and that is the Break the Silence uh, book. You guys have a free launching mm -hmm. coming yes. up. Mm -hmm. um, do we have a date on the? We don't have the exact date of when I would we will pre-launch the book. The book's first book signing. Okay. Um, so we're just waiting to see as soon as the book come out. We're looking for it to be probably at the same time the show start airing. Okay. Uh, within two weeks, we're hoping everything is at the finished point. So and then we'll have our have a big book signing. But right now we are doing a pre-launching. Sure. Yes. yes. We are doing a pre-launching where people can pre-order their book. Okay. Um, and so um, you're able to pre-order the book and you can send it um, to any of the ladies. We all have our own chapter and titles of mm -hmm. our books. So you are able to send it to any of the ladies. Um, I'm going to let each lady just say how you can send it. But you're still going to get all of our stories. So it does not matter right. who you right. know you actually so you uh, purchase the book from it does right. not matter so if you want to pre-launch the book you can contact each one of us individually um, and I'm not sure if you want to um, for um, how you want to present that um, mm -hmm. to them Anna uh, but for them to pre-launch the book instead of us just throwing out all of our ways of paying so sure sure it, it's gonna be on my website okay you can, you can okay. Uh, 
get, receive the information okay. on my website, which is theannalindsayshow.com, right. and we're going to promote it. So okay. we'll be Thank on you. all the social Thank medias, you. Uh, you, we'll be Clark TV Network, yes. So and also at the, we will share you guys' contact information at the end, so they Amen. can contact you individually. So Good. it's going to be out there. I'm yes. going to definitely promote it, and I can't wait to get my copy. Again, I'm glad that you sh you uh, shared it like the, uh, you, you're telling us because when I first was introduced to you guys, you we had different titles, mm -hmm. um, and then it was it was interesting to see that each of you had your stories in the book. So that's the way the book is formed. Yeah. The stories in the book. So we have uh, Miss Tess. Yours is the. I look good on the outside, but hurting in the inside. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's what Miss Tess is going to be telling us about you guys. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Tanya, what's, what is your part of the book? My part of the book is hurting little girls become hurt women. Mm -hmm. Okay. And mine is bruised but not broken. Bruised but not broken. Mm -hmm. Mine is a testimony from the heart. A testimony from the heart. So you're going to get all of those stories mm -hmm. in one book. Amen. One Amen. book. Mm -hmm. Why break the silence? Who wants to? Who wants to talk about it? Why break? Why the book? Why the book? Break the silence. You are the visionary. You want to tell us? Um, why break the I went through. Um, a um, marriage that I had as a pastor while I was a pastor and um, I went through some verbal abuse mm -hmm. from that marriage and I just got married and I end up leaving that marriage okay. um, because it was too much verbal abuse okay. and I thought I kept silent but as of course being a pastor you can't keep silent because everybody now is wondering where is your husband? Okay. What happened? Mm -hmm. Why are y'all not together anymore? So you get all these different types of questions. Mm -hmm. And so um, I, and and all of a sudden the Holy Spirit told me, he said, tell them. Because right. I wasn't going to tell anyone. Right. I wasn't going to tell anyone what I went through. I probably would have made up an excuse mm -hmm. of what I did go through. And so when I began to tell one woman, mm -hmm. that woman broke her silence mm -hmm. about what she'd been through mm -hmm. and said, yeah, I've been through that before. And some women were saying, oh, I did it. For, I went through that for 10 years. Mm -hmm. I went through that type of abuse. I went through verbal. I went through physical abuse. And I was just like, oh, my God. Right. Oh, wow. And I did not think, and the, the, the most important thing that I want to say, because I am a pastor, and we don't do a lot of conversation about our behind closed doors because we're in the ministry and we are pouring out to so many people. So sometimes people don't think pastors and folks in the ministry go through anything or we're not supposed to go through anything. Mm -hmm. But um, I come to break the silence on that. And um that we go through as well and we have challenges behind our closed doors and so even though we have to keep doing whatever God told us to do yes. um, but we still go through things we still have challenges and so out of that it broke silence on every woman I start talking to especially those in ministry mm -hmm. and I just begin to say oh wow God yes yeah. oh See wow mm -hmm. oh wow and out of that God said now that you've broke your silence okay. and you're not, you didn't make an excuse, you told it and they broke their silence and they didn't make an excuse. And these are people that I've known for up to years wow. that I had no idea that they were going through this. Wow. And then God said, now tell the story. Oh, wow. There mm -hmm. we go. There we go. Mm -hmm. So it just didn't start there, mm -hmm. but then it reminded me that what I went through as a child. Oh, wow. Um, of the abuse that I got a chance to witness mm -hmm. as a child. Mm -hmm. um, and so it, it made me, that's how this book came into surface. And I asked, um, trust me, it was about 15 women I asked to come and collaborate in this book. Okay. But unfortunately, some was afraid to tell the story. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for different reasons. For so many different reasons. Mm -hmm. And then someone just wasn't ready. Yeah. Um, and so I thank God for the women that did decide to collaborate to come and tell their story. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank Amen. you, ladies. Yes. Thank you, ladies. It sounded like a message of healing when you were saying. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's, that's what I heard. Healing, Amen. healing. 
from yes, that assignment. So what God yes, told you, you truly, wanted you to truly bring, healing. bring healing. And my God, yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. Okay, um, so I, I got all into that. <laughs> I knew it was. Um, so thank you for sharing us to, with us about how Break the Sonics came about, the collaboration. Mm -hmm. uh, the What about the collaboration, your experience in joining uh, Apostle Tess mm -hmm. in, it, in, in writing the book? I mean, it. I, I was kind of hesitant at first. I was, you know, because in my mind, she'll tell you. I must have rewrote this thing a thousand times. <laughs> Trust me, she would tell you that. Because I just didn't want it, I didn't want to, I wanted to tell a story, but I didn't want to make him out to be the worst person because we actually had a really good relationship, but he had a problem that I knew nothing about. Okay. So when it became, when it came out like that, I'm thinking, okay, what, what is this? What's, what's going on here? And being married, because I enjoy the union of marriage, mm -hmm. I figured these are my vows, this is my mm -hmm. husband, I really do love him, I'm gonna make sure that I stay here, I'm gonna just let him know that I'm here. But it was so much, and I did not realize that emotionally it was really breaking me down. Okay. Even though people couldn't tell anything, because if I tell mm -hmm. people, it's like, I didn't even know you were going through that for how long? Come and on. I went through that for like two and a half years. Mm -hmm. Nobody knew it took me forever to just really speak, mm -hmm. you know? And I think the only closest people that knew that was my mother, of course. Mm -hmm. And then y'all shared a little bit with my daughter, but even they didn't know the extent of it, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Because sometimes, kid, my daughters are adults, 23 and 28. So they're kind of like, they're gonna, of course I would, yeah. Mom, because this is, you know, and that was just their stepdad. So it really, I just, I rewrote it, rewrote it. But I'm so glad that I was able to just say, let it go. I yeah. just said, let it go. Mm -hmm. You know, because you will bless others. And that's really yes. what I want to do, is to be yes. able to bless other women. Yes. To let them know, you don't have to be silent. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't tell people to leave the people who they're with. That mm -hmm. is not my place. Mm -hmm. I knew what Kim had to do. Right. Because it had became too much. And I'm going to be honest with you, I wasn't even going to do that. I don't know how long. If I took it for two and a half years, there's no telling. But the Lord just spoke to me one day, just as clear, and I had to make a move. Wow. So that's that's how I got you know got here and was able to and we're gonna, keep going. We're going to get into yeah. that because people are on in these different situations and on different levels with yeah. it, and there's a lot that come into it. Safety, you know, just mm -hmm. a lot of factor financing, finances. Mm -hmm. We all talked about that. Mm -hmm. Grace, uh, yours was a a, a a healing process for you, right? Uh, my part of the book? Yes, ma'am. Yes. I had to do a lot of praying because I I had to ask the Lord where He wanted me to start. And He told me to start from the beginning. Mm -hmm. And for me, the beginning was what I had experienced as, as a child. Okay. As a child. And uh, yes, I'm familiar with the verbal abuse, the mental abuse, the mm -hmm. emotional abuse, the physical abuse, mm -hmm. all of that. Because experiencing um, what I talked about in my book was the beginning. Mm -hmm. But then as I grew up in my teenage years, adult years, I got married and I experienced all the rest of that. I just gave a piece of mm -hmm. what the beginning was. Okay. And it was uh, when you're sexually abused mm -hmm. as a child. Mm -hmm. And I know that there's a lot of people out there mm -hmm. yes. that have been through that. Mm -hmm. And as Apostle Tess had mentioned about the book, Breaking the Silence, a lot of people, I believe, are trapped in their silence mm -hmm. because they don't want to talk about it. Mm -hmm. But I know that when I was writing, and as I was writing, the Lord was, again, delivering me mm -hmm. while I was writing That's it. That's good. Yeah. And it's one thing to speak it, another thing to write it, another thing to really allow the Lord to go in your heart mm -hmm. and show you the, the the root cause of things in your in your life mm -hmm. because if you don't come to the root of where you are mm -hmm. then you're going to carry those things and carry and carry and carry and then when you get in a relationship with someone else if you have an anger issue a rejection issue whatever you've been through when you were young if you don't mm -hmm. deal with it at the root yes. then how do you expect to be healed yeah. and set free mm -hmm. and that's where i went from the beginning to where i where the lord let me to stop yeah but that was just a little piece of what i've gone through not everything just a little piece yeah. sure yeah. sure sure and in that in that um that 
that's that's the goal is to be free mm -hmm. and we can we can experience yes. a level you know we know that we're free once we're transformed but right. we can have freedom here in a level of freedom here while we're here on earth and that's Amen. why we're here Definitely. okay yes. Your collaboration with the book, uh, that process there, how did it come? My collaboration with the book, I had been wrote, wrote my book over four years. Mm -hmm. I already, when, when Pastor Taste asked me to come along, my book was already together. Wow. Um, at first, I didn't want to say nothing because I did not want to hurt my little sister since her dad was the one who started molestation uh, when I was uh, eight or nine years old. But it didn't stop there. It happened all the way up until I was 17 with different means that my mother was with. And I also didn't want to hurt my mom mm -hmm. because with the rejection thing with her, mm -hmm. I got rejected from birth. Uh, at first I thought the rejection was just my mother, but it wound up being my father too. Wow. Because I did not know him. My mother uh, got molested. That's how I came in. Okay. Went from her being molested to me being molested, my and then my own children. Hmm. At first, I felt some type of way mm -hmm. of not wanting that out right. because I didn't want my sister, even though it was her father, I didn't want her to not love her dad, even though he hurt me, mm -hmm. he didn't do it to her. Okay. So I was thinking of my little sister. Then I said, well, it's my story. It didn't happen to them, it happened to me. So. I said no more silence because I had been silenced. You know, when you little, people tell you, you uh, what goes in my house stays in my house. That's so those people bought that stuff up inside. Mm -hmm. And they go through rejection. They go through trauma. They go through mental illness, mm -hmm. psychologically, physically. I started seeing a psychiatrist. And the psychiatrist already had the story of what happened to me. But they wanted me to act act that out and I wasn't willing to do any of that. Mm -hmm. Now the psychiatrist had to do it and I, and I set boundaries what I what I didn't want to talk about okay. with them. Being that the psychiatrist always a man. So I said why y'all can't never bring no women in mm -hmm. to talk to us because beings that happen to you that's a man you might uh, think, see that person face on that person that you with it out. Because I did that at first. Okay. And I had to do a lot of apologizing uh, with the psychiatrist because sometimes he would push me to talk about it. Mm -hmm. And I kept saying no until I was ready to talk about it. Mm -hmm. And he said, you'll never be healed if I don't push you to do it. I said, uh, no, I'm only going to do it if God says to let it out. Mm -hmm. So one day I just had to let it out a lot. Mm -hmm. But my book has different sections in it of what I went through. Yeah, yeah. Do you, you And with my marriage, it was like I couldn't be t totally physical in my marriage because yeah. I was seeing that person face on my husband. Mm -hmm. So I have not embraced my marriage all the way, even though I am married. Sometimes uh, people say things to trigger that thing, that trauma that happened to you in your life. So you go back to that being bottled up and you go back to that little girl. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I have to tell that little girl, I'm not a little girl anymore, I, I, I'm grown. Mm -hmm. So sometimes I have to tell her to leave. Yeah. I, I tell her, you don't have to protect me anymore. God had already done that. Mm -hmm. So it's a process. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, still a, it's still a process. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. well, thanks for sharing that. I know that that's, that's not easy for any of us to be up here, uh, you know, and, and share. Us experiences that are, are so sensitive. Mm -hmm. You know, we are right here where we are needing to take a break here. Uh, we're having to go into a commercial break, but we will be back right back. Again, thanks for tuning in. This is the Anna Lindsay Show, and I have my four <laughs> dynamic, beautiful ladies here Thank with you. Break the Silence, yes. authors, four authors, mm -hmm. one book, four authors Amen. telling their stories. We'll be right back. Thank you. Lance, you are the best. What about those barbecues you plan in detail for your family? Or your daughter's first costume party? It was out of this world. The same way you plan each detail for those moments, start planning to protect you and your loved ones from a natural disaster. Sign up for local weather and emergency alerts. Prepare an emergency kit and make a family communications plan. Protecting your family is the best plan you can make. 
during high school. I hung with the wrong crowd and I never graduated. I helped Santiago in many different ways like all fathers do because he always wanted to go to college. I felt a little embarrassed to come back to school, but eventually once I came here, I knew that it's for a bigger goal. He was very dedicated, hardworking. He connected with his teachers. He connected with other students. That was one of the key reasons why he was able to keep forging ahead. It was amazing to see him graduate. This was one thing that meant so much to him, and of course, it meant so much to us too. With the help of my father and having my son, that was all the motivation that I needed. That support is everything. Find free adult education classes near you at finishyourdiploma.org. When the stadium lights are dimmed, when the cameras stop flashing, when the pads are off, the pressure sinks in and it's just me. Just me in a world of expectation. Nobody can carry that alone. But pressure doesn't have to be carried alone. What if we came together as a team? Embrace talking openly about our mental health. If we reached out, checked in. Seize the awkward. Imagine what we could do. Hey everyone, we are back. You have tuned in again to the Anna Lindsay Show, and I am uh, coming back here with my uh, guests uh, for Dynamic Women, uh, authors of one book. Each of them have a story in the book. Mm -hmm. The name of the book is called Break the Silence. Welcome back, ladies. Hey, hey. 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 welcome yes. back, audience. <laughs> uh, you know, we we were there. You guys have been pouring out your heart. I appreciate this because it's not an easy subject, but it's a subject of healing. Yes. It's a subject of experience, but yet healing. And this is why you're here because you want to share your story to help someone else and also allow God continue to transform you. Amen. Mm -hmm. that's because right. that's what it does. I think it's a lifelong yeah. oh, yes. development and transformation, yes. but we can get there, you know, and as yeah. I said before, yes. we can have more peace here on earth. We can have more mm -hmm. joy, uh, more wisdom in yes. our experiences. If we let it work for us, mm -hmm. it can do just that. That's right. By His grace. Yeah. And yes. It is. His uh, power and His Holy Spirit. Yeah. So Tess, you uh, excuse me, <laughs> uh, Gracie. Before we left, you were telling us uh, about off the air. You were sharing with me about Miss Tess and how you felt about her. Share mm -hmm. with the audience what you were saying. I just wanted to uh, give honor where honor is due. Okay, and that is to Apostle Tess. Yes. And she is the visionary author of the book, and I am honored to be a part of this book. And I'd like to say thank you to her on the air because it takes courage. It takes courage, it takes strength, and it takes devotion and commitment to do something like this. And a lot of women, I believe, are trapped in their silence because we're just one, two, three, four people here. And breaking our silence mm -hmm. of what, of our experiences in our life. But I know that there's many, many other people out there that have been in the same shoes as I've been, or Apostle Tess, or any of the other women that are here. Um, but it's very, very important because breaking the silence will bring forth your healing yes. as well. Amen. If you stay in your silence, you'll be <clears throat> tormented. And that's something that I have mentioned in the book too. Because when I went, uh, when I wrote my portion of it, uh, and as I was writing again, it brought more deliverance to my heart and Amen. to my soul, Amen. and um, the deliverance set me free. And that's what breaking the silence is about: right. is is to break free from what's tormenting you on the inside, mm -hmm. and you have to come grips the reality of what it is that's inside. That's the root cause of why. So maybe example would be maybe somebody that's angry, mm -hmm. that has an anger issue or a rejection issue mm -hmm. or a fear problem. You got to get mm -hmm. to that root inside your heart mm -hmm. and come face to face with that and then be able to tell that story to get it out. Because if you don't, you'll, you'll just be dealing with those kind of uh, 
resentful, emotional um, things in your heart and issues. Mm -hmm. And I just want to say again, thank you, Apostle Tess, for letting us be a part of this. Thank you. You're because welcome. it is very important that we come together. That's what it's about, is coming together and finding out that you're not the only one that has suffered something or gone through something. And then a lot of the times the enemy wants to make you feel like you're by yourself or, yeah. you, or you've, you're the only one that's gone through this or be right. um, embarrassed mm -hmm. or, you know, something like that. But when you come forth and you break the silence and really get down to the root of what causes the issues, then you're able to, to reach that place of being set free yeah. and healed. Getting there. Getting there. That's great. That's great. Uh, how has the experience, just you know, briefly, because we still have, we still have, the, you know, just even even more that we want to talk about. So, just how has the experience changed you? Mm. Oh my goodness! You know, I am in a place of peace. It's nothing like having mm. God's peace, and. I did not, like I said, I didn't even realize that I didn't even have that because I was just going. I had gotten so used to what my ex-husband was doing. It was almost like, okay, he's not here. I'm getting up. I'll just go shop or I'll go to the store. It was almost like I was living a life. I knew that I was married, but I felt always alone. Okay. So I never had that peace, you know. Um, I just always felt alone. And it, it just, but I was, and I knew that, but now that I'm out of it, you know, God always sends us through different steps. Mm -hmm. At least he does with me. Mm -hmm. And he'll show me different things. And he'll say, remember when this, this, and that, and this is why you were feeling. And I'm like, oh, my God, I didn't even realize that it was that bad emotionally for me. Yeah, okay. You know, mentally, because that works on you. It really does. Exactly. People may not think that you're going through things. Like, I guess I never looked like I was because when I would share it a little bit, it's like, oh, my God, I had no idea. Mm -hmm. But you yourself, you know. I mean, I had, and trust me, I went through the tears. I went through the, God, are you sure? I want to make sure this is you that's telling me to do this and not me that's doing this. Mm -hmm. But he would always always direct me into his word I kid you not and it just it still blows my mind and any question that I had and I thought oh my gosh you love me that much because I just want to make sure that because sometimes we can get in our own feelings mm -hmm. and we'll start moving but God did not say move you know what I mean yes, I but when he does then he expects for you to do that you know, so I had to, he had to really work with me because I'm, I'm the one that's like, well, Lord, are you sure? Are you absolutely sure this one? But it just went like clockwork. And before you knew it, it was where I was in a place of, of, of peace because yeah. that's just where I am right now. And it's, you know, it's, it's wonderful because I don't feel the, the pressure. I don't feel the, the anger because you go through so many different emotions from the crying to the mm -hmm. anger to the, why, why me? What, what do you mean? How did we even get here to this point? I mean, why you didn't say... And I had to just stop doing all of that and just say, Lord, I just trust you. Mm -hmm. There's nothing else I can do. I just have to trust you, and I trust that you're going to lead me down the right way. And, yeah, he, yeah. and so, he does. And he, he does it. all the time. So, yeah. yeah. Thanks, ladies. Thanks for sharing, both of you. Thank, Thank you. you. What about you? How do you, what, um, how has this experience <laughs> changed you today? What is today? Now, fast forwarding. Today it changed me because now I know what love feels like. I had never felt love from no one until I met Pastor Ted. Okay. We met during, uh, we both were speaking in a conference mm -hmm. at my uh, brother-in-law's church. And we both had a point. And um, Pastor Ted felt, I mean, uh, felt so many things in my life. She not only was my pastor, but she came my spiritual mother, okay. a friend. One day I wrote her and I sent her a long paragraph of what all she was to me. Mm -hmm. Because I didn't, I didn't, my mother had me and then she went to prison right after she had me. <clears throat> so for me, it was like a whole different dynamic. Okay. I was already a mother, but I didn't feel like a mother. Mm -hmm. I knew I had children. But it felt like I didn't have none at all because I was still missing the one that they took from me. Okay. I didn't get a choice to say, no, I didn't want to abort that baby. I didn't even know what abortion was, any of that, at 10. So sometimes I long for that child, wondering what would have happened if I did have this child. Okay. And then I had a feeling of me and my mother having a child from the same man 
at the same time, wow. how did it make my mother feel? Hmm. Knowing that your daughter was also pregnant for the same man you were pregnant for. Hmm. My mother just not found out because I didn't share it with her and neither did CPS wow. uh, share it with, with her. So when I got put in a foster home, it was like that little girl came back. It was like nobody loved me. And all I did was wanted to fight. And I've been fighting all my life. Mm -hmm. So Pastor Tess told me one day, you don't have to fight no more. Mm -hmm. Let God fight them battles right. for you. Because you're not in that anymore. You went through it, but you're not going through it right now. Mm -hmm. So it was like embrace. Embrace the love from God because yeah. you still had, I still had a daddy because yeah. I had the heavenly father, the yeah. best daddy there was. Yeah. We'll see him. Yeah. Yeah. And I tell you, I give him all the glory and yes. all the honor belongs to him. Yes. Not to myself or no one else. Come on. It was like a whole t totally different mm. experience on life mm. for me because I never thought I was pretty. I never thought I was anybody. I thought I was we went to a, 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 a conference called Arise and Flourish. Okay. I let some of my story out there, and I was at the table with Pastor Tiggs, and I said, I thank God I'm not a pearl that was thrown away. Right. Mm -hmm. That uh, I'm just a beautiful swan yes. that was an ugly duckling, but I ain't no more. Praise God. So that's how it was for me. And now it's love. Right. Yes. Now it's love. Yeah. Now I can embrace love from other people because at first I won't let nobody get near me. Mm -hmm. I always was like this, like, uh-uh, don't hug me, don't touch me, don't come in my space, none of that. Mm -hmm. I had a lot of angry, bitter, bitterness, and rejection. I rejected even my own children, mm -hmm. and especially my husband, which he didn't deserve any of it. Right. And I didn't feel like uh, telling him at first because I thought most men's relationships that I was in before I got married when I told him the story They used what happened to me against me mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And my husband and I didn't mm -hmm. so I didn't know how to uh, Act or embrace that. Yeah. Yeah, but look at now Yes. yes. <laughs> so, look at now. I was in the valley of dry bones, but now I'm here. Now, right. Look at now and you're sharing that. So that's yes. that's, that's hope. That's hope. Right. Yes, definitely. Yes. yes, what about you, Ms. Council? I just want to first say thank you to the ladies, um, as I said before, trust in the vision, trust in the assignment, um, because this was a hard assignment, right. you know. Yes. Um, it, it was not um, for God to pour this in me um, because hmm, I, I, I'm just grateful for them. I thank you for them. Um, it has truly, I understand my purpose. I understand yes. why God called me as a deliverance pastor. Um, I, at first, I told God, I, what is a deliverance pastor? You know, because I, when I first started preaching, I was preaching like everybody else. Mm -hmm. uh, preaching like the pastors that I've been up under. Mm -hmm. And God told me, he said, he sat me down and he said, I didn't call you to be them. Yeah. I didn't call, that's not what I anointed you to do. And I said, well, what is it? And he said, you're a deliverance pastor. Mm -hmm. That's powerful. And he said, and I said, well, what is that? You know, what that look like? And he said, and me, you know, um, he took me to the scripture and he just said that um, Luke 4 and 18. And he said, I need you. You will be dealing with the oppressed. Oh, wow. You will be dealing with people who are going to come into your ministry that or feel, feel less fortunate, mm -hmm. or don't feel like they have a voice, mm -hmm. or don't feel like nobody, they worth anything. And he said, and I want you to speak life in them. Yes. And so break the silence is just me. Another way of God saying, speak life. Speak life. A way speak an life and give them a way outlet. Yeah. Um, so I'm grateful for the women that came forth. Um, not knowing the outcome, mm -hmm. not knowing what the unknown, not knowing how this was going to take off or mm -hmm. what, or should they even say it, right. you know, right. um, and just them right. wanting to back out, you know, mm -hmm. and there was times they wanted to back out. <laughs> yes, they, yeah, they wanted yeah. to back out, but they, they, then they said, okay, apostle. And that, that right there, I knew they trust the, the, the anointing mm -hmm. that God gave me uh -huh. and say that I'm not going to put them in harm's way. Mm -hmm. If I could protect them, I would try to protect them the way that God allows That's me. Amazing. Can I say that? You can. So you can. I just said, 
y'all, this is going to be a breakthrough for many women. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Even though some family members, some friends, people may get hurt behind it. People may feel like we're talking about them. We're not talking about them. Right. We're telling right. them our, our story. Yes. Right. What exactly. we right. went through. Yes. What we went through as children watching it. And we're telling our story. Mm -hmm. And so we, I want to put that out there because I don't want friends and family to get offended mm -hmm. by any one of our stories. Yeah. I want them to see it like that's their story. Mm -hmm. exactly. They went through it. Unfortunately, if it was family members involved that caused it to happen. Well, in the book, I don't see none of us. We didn't use names, mm -hmm. but people will know who they are. You right. see what I'm saying? Yeah. But it has really... Um, done a transformation on me and healed me and delivered me more than I felt when God delivered me personally. Mm -hmm. But writing this book yeah. was like a total deliverance yes. for me. Mm -hmm. Like, wow. We just went in the restaurant on our break and we yeah. were like, wow, y'all. Yeah. Yeah. It's done. <laughs> this, is, did, this is the beginning. Yes. And so I just want people to literally get healed from it. Yes. I want them to be open-minded about it. Yeah. Yes. Yes, right. and that's, it's evident. I mean, we just, you being obedient, we just heard um, uh, her testimony and how Amen. it's brought her and, and the deliverance and breaking the, breaking the cycle mm -hmm. and, the, and yes. the bondage from her. So right. you're, you're doing what you're supposed to do. Amen. Yay. Amen. Yay. Amen. Yay. Yay. <laughs> and we're, we're here because it is, um, it, it, our, our stories, I have yes. shared mine, but our stories have, are not, uncommon right you know, right lots of people all of us as i said before no one's untouched right. from some form of pain right. and mental and emotional stress yeah, on exactly. different levels yeah. so you know it's going to be able to be identity identify and uh, hopefully understand the power of writing. Mm -hmm. Yes. Writing yes. your story mm -hmm. down yes. Yes. you are mm -hmm. a certified you yourself up a life coach, yes, and there's different forms. You can talk yeah. about it, but writing mm -hmm. is something about writing it, it down. It is, it really is. Emptying yeah. out, writing. Mm -hmm. So, um, what, let's talk about some of the aftermath, just, you know, just bringing more context and more clarity of, around the different abuse that are, are that we experience and have experienced and others may experience. Um, the aftermath, the Anger it shows up in anger, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Sometimes it shows up in anger. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, you had mentioned that shows up in loneliness, mm -hmm. yes. bitterness, bitterness, yeah. frustration, frustration, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. loneliness, loneliness, yeah, definitely loneliness, rejection, yeah, rejection, rejection. Yeah. Yeah. childhood trauma, psychological, physically, emotionally, all of it. Yep. Yeah. 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 Problems with trust issues. Trust yes. issues. Yes. I have that down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, trust issues, uh, self -worth. And believe it or not, sometimes it's even your faith. Your faith? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're a pastor, and, you know, this, this faith is what you, you speak on, mm -hmm. you know, right. and right. having to just to, to battle with that, balance that out. Right. One of the things that transparent. my kids had said to me, Mama, we didn't know you were going through that. And Mama, why didn't you say nothing? And why did you stay? And that is a question that all of us have. You know, I remember when I got to college, I was asking my mother the same thing because I, I watched my mother go through physical abuse um, as a little girl. And I remember going off to college and I said, Mom, why did you stay? And so all those are question marks. And like I told my kids, I was hoping and praying that he would change. Yeah. And so, yeah. because I'm a pastor, I pray for other people. I pray for people and tell them, just pray about it. Right. Just, yeah. yeah, just <laughs> believe and trust and, and, and just let God work it out. So, I was doing it, but it takes a willing vessel, y'all. Mm -hmm. That's true. Right. Can yes. I tell That's you, true. sometimes yeah. we stay too long. Yes. Yes. And yes. sometimes when a person is not willing, and I know I didn't go through the physical side, so right. that made me try to endure a little bit longer mm -hmm. because it wasn't physical. Mm -hmm. exactly. But but the verbal is just as worse, y'all. Yeah. And yes, God told me himself, if I stayed any longer, it was going to turn into physical. Mm -hmm. oh. And so I have never experienced the physical side. But I've always, I had experienced the verbal side. The emotional piece. Yeah. 
Yeah. yeah, so the verbal abuse can be because somebody's tearing you down, mm -hmm. yeah. and they're tearing yes. you down, the life. and they're sucking life up out of you. And so yes. just to get up in the morning and on Sundays and try to preach and go and teach and pray for others and still show up, I'm telling you, y'all, man, it was like when it was like when God gave me the exit, escape out. Mm -hmm. That was. Like, I knew it was him, took off, and then I was like, yeah. I didn't think, we don't want to tell all the book. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We want y'all to read it. Yeah, we don't want to tell all the book. Amen. And, and, Come on. You know, and let's just uh, piggyback off of that because getting out is especially from mental or physical because you're you're actually, like you said, you're, you're you're dealing with people, it could be a parent, it could be a spouse, yes. it could be you know, a grandparent, you know, it, right. it comes in different mm -hmm. forms yeah. and you're dealing with their issues and it, uh, most of the time hurting people hurt. Who, yeah. who has that? You yeah, know, Hurting people, you said, you know, women, you're hurt hurting people. Hurt girls. people. Yeah. Sometimes people you don't hurt. even know that you're hurting people because you hurting inside. Right. You're yeah. not know that you are also hurting somebody too mm -hmm. right. at the same time. So I try not to do that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Not intentionally. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I mean, and that's where you, you you came, but you can see you, you've grown to that. But you know, you're dealing with people who are hurting, who have not done yes, their work. I love you. Right. Yana, uh, what's her name? The Ayala. 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 Yes, there you go. I love her. I love the. I love what she does, and and uh, the the phrase "do your work." I always remind myself, Anna, do your work. Right. You know, yes. Do your work. So shout out to that to her. Yeah. Uh, with that, uh, helping me with that, and reminding you know just. But everyone, let me get back on track. Everyone is right. not there where they're doing their work, and so the boundaries are moved and. We have to protect ourselves from that, if, you know, mm -hmm. and that's what we're seeing right here. Mm -hmm. But, in like I said, it's not always easy getting out because some people that's will right. retaliate. And yes, that's right. Yes. When I was, um, I was, oh gosh, a teenager, I always just had this kind of mind, the mind that I have now, <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, in my experience, but was drawn to battered women shelters, homeless, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I, that's my my right. heart. I'm right. really yes. sensitive about that. That right. keeps me up, that keeps me brain. Mm -hmm. um, so I joined as, as a teenager, went to a shelter, volunteered at a shelter mm -hmm. for women, battered mm -hmm. women. Mm -hmm. well, I hadn't experienced any of it other than my childhood experience, but it wasn't, that was my motivating factor. I just was drawn to it. Right. And got the certification for um, being able to take calls and just go mm -hmm. and help and mm -hmm. on a volunteer basis. And um, you see women coming through with, and with their kids, mm -hmm. some without, some without the, with their kids, with absolutely nothing. Without, you know, right. in different towns, right. different mm -hmm. cities, lo relocated, just running away from the abuser mm -hmm. on those different kind of levels. So it's not always, you know, the plan, you know, right. they, we talk about, you know, as a counselor, you know, your plan right. and right. executing mm -hmm. and all of that. It gets real serious, you guys. Right. Right. Yes. 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 It gets real serious. You have people who don't make it out, yep. you know, yes. don't make it out. Um, you know, and then having the resources for those who do make it out. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. right. And there, there are resources. Anybody want to elaborate on any of those uh, resources and um, have any thoughts on me, how to? One of the things, you know, there's some, there's a lot of resources out there. You have, of course, you have the Women's Crisis Center. You have a lot of different, in every city and state, they have the Women's Crisis Center. Um, you have some people that have homes for um, battered women and, mm -hmm. you know, children made that experience in it, as well as shelters. Um, one of the things that I am praying for, though, okay. um, is that um, we get to a place that we don't make it so red tape. Mm -hmm. Because when a woman calls in or call that shelter or call wherever it is at, we want, when we're telling them you got to fill out this form first, mm -hmm. well, their life might be in danger right there. Yeah, exactly. yeah. 
That's true. So you're asking them to fill out a form. I don't have the time to go to a computer and fill out a form. Right. Right. You see what I'm saying? Yes. So I, I, I'm praying that we get to a I place that is not so red tape. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. not so structured. And I understand we got to have structure mm -hmm. with these organizations. We get grants. We got to follow. Well, just come in and do the paperwork when you get here. Mm -hmm. You know, but and then some places is full. And I get that. Lots I understand it. So it's, mm -hmm. it's so neat that we have more places mm -hmm. and and can I say this yes Women is not the only one that go through abuse. Come on. Say that. That's men come on. do too. Yes. 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 And I have had conferences where men told their story of their abuse. The same physical, mental, emotional, and sexual abuse mm -hmm. that they've been through. Men just don't speak out on it as we as women do. Mm -hmm. um, so they need to provide, of course, more men's yeah. shelters. But mm -hmm. I just want us to get to a place, and that may be for the mayors, the councilmen in each cities or what to get to the place where they don't make it so red tape mm -hmm. because when folks need help, they need help yeah, like yeah, immediately. Yeah. And because of the delay or because of the rules that we have in place where they have to, you know, I can't make him leave, but I can ask him to just go for 24 hours, but he could he could return back, but when he returned back, maybe the last time. Yeah. That woman has. Yes. Yes. So we gotta. We may have to fight for more. I could. It's so many resources out there, but there's some things that we need to get to change the drive. Yes, we need to do yes. some work, work on. Work. You know, and I think we can. We can help with a lot of. Um, try to help a lot of lives mm -hmm. that's been taken from right. different types of abuse. And this mm -hmm. is this is part of why we're doing this today. Is bringing yes. more awareness towards uh, towards the subject here. Amen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Can I add something? Sure. I, I just want to say, um, going back, when you talk about hurting people, hurt others, I just want to say that when a person is in a situation like that, sometimes they can act a certain way and treat someone else mm -hmm. a certain way and mm -hmm. not even know the effect that they're having on that person mm -hmm. because they're so blinded with their own hurt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And whenever they come out of that pain and be delivered of that hurt, then there, then, then, as an individual, you're able to see. Oh my yeah, gosh, I, I was acting that way. Oh mm -hmm. my gosh, I said those things, or mm -hmm. I did that. I didn't yeah. mean to, you know. And, yeah. But or would have, could have, should have, or like too late. Yeah. But you know, it's recognizing mm -hmm. and seeing, you know, that you can go past the pain. Mm -hmm. And the last thing I wanted to say is that when, as Apostle Tess was talking about the women in the crisis and shelters and stuff. Men do do go through that, yeah. Because I have experienced men talk to me about those things, and I know of a place right now that men sometimes when women and men, when they get uh, separated from their children, especially if they are incarcerated or in jail mm -hmm. and stuff like that, they don't know how to interact with their with their children or families again, and they need help with those things. Amen. But when they're in, in in jail or incarcerated, it's all. I, I believe it all goes back to mm -hmm. your childhood, yeah. what you experienced, yeah, what mm -hmm. you went through. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you're so trapped in your pain that you can't get that out. Mm -hmm. And I, I know a person uh, today that has been dealing with the same issue for years mm -hmm. and can't seem to break out of it. Yeah, but I think it's because of fear. Right. But that fear holds that person back to where you won't speak and you cannot be set free, which keeps your soul and your heart in torment. Mm -hmm. And you just want to be able to speak out to break free. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the resources, also yes. the resources. Right. Uh, not having them or knowing them or even just the, the limited, oh. oh my goodness, the limited resources yeah, that yeah, are yeah. out there for for mm -hmm. uh, you know, humans and mm -hmm. the, the issues that we come up against. Yeah. Okay, so again, I just knew that this subject is going to um, require a part two, <laughs> <laughs> three panel discussions, <laughs> you know, just a, a, a continued conversation. Yeah. Um, my uh, producer is now telling me that we're, it's about time for us to wrap up. Yeah. Um, uh, I know that this has been beneficial. We talked about women we talked about men just want to tell you just lightly hit on teenagers it is an epidemic yes, now it is. yes uh and teenagers mm -hmm. teenagers yes. are of uh, what i just uh read uh, one out of 11 mm -hmm. are being mm -hmm. experiencing 
an adult level mm -hmm. type of abuse. Yeah. Right. Yes. And there's ways to, to um, the, the important, the, one of the important things to do is to communicate, not judge, mm -hmm. but also I just want to highlight they bring awareness to that, yes. uh, that they are there too, along with kids, but teenagers have been, it's been an uprise. Yes. Uh, and we can we can see why. So yeah. again, it's a whole nother oh, yeah. it's a whole <laughs> subject. Yes. Yes. Uh, yes. Part of the subject, but I want the, you know to thank you guys, the audience, for listening. I want to thank uh, the ladies, mm -hmm. you guys, for coming in. I You're feel welcome. like I have sisters, and yes. 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 into my life, um, yes. and mm -hmm. I just uh, appreciate you trusting me with your stories, trusting yes. my platform yes. with your stories, and I know it has been. It's it's, good, it's helpful. Yes. Um, before we close, I would like to um, like for you guys to, to share your contact information. Okay. Uh, you can be reached. Okay. Of course, you can reach any of them here uh, on the Anna Lindsay Show. But how can you be reached? Um, the, you can reach me at, um, you can go to Behind Closed Doors Outreach at gmail.com. Um, and you can also reach me, of course, on Facebook, Tess B. Anthony. Um, and so you can inbox and message me um, if, you know, if for any other engagements, speaking collaborations or speaking shows that you want us to be a part of mm -hmm. or book signings that you want to have at yes. your location. Um, that, that is where I can be reached. Awesome. Amen. Awesome. Uh, Tanya? You can reach me. Uh, by Facebook up under uh, Tanya Jones, or you can read my email, Tanya Jones at 7214gmail.com, or you can DM me. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, you can reach me also on uh, Facebook, um, Kim Steverson, S T E V E R S O N. Uh, you can DM me there, or you can send me an email that's the number one, K I M Y B dot two at gmail.com great you, Gracie? and you can reach me at uh, also through Facebook under Gracie Gibson it uh, there's two of me on there but the one that of me that's uh, has a background a better background bright 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 that's the one you can reach me <laughs> at it's uh, Gracie G-R-E-C-E-Y mm -hmm. Gibson G-I-P-S-O-N or you can reach me through my email Gracie Gibson 46 at gmail.com or you can also message me. Great. Mm -hmm. You heard it. Uh, these ladies are available to support, share their stories, book signings. I'm looking forward to the events. I'm going to yes. show up. I can't okay. wait. So yes. to support, yes. I'm going to get my copy. I want to thank my producer, Malcolm Galladay, yes. for uh, setting us up and yes. doing, thank being you. amazing as he is. We appreciate you. I want to thank Clark TV Network and, of course, the audience. This is the Anna Lindsay Show. You can, uh, the show will air. We'll put it out there. I'm here every Monday, 6 p.m. Central Standard Time. You'll be able to view the show soon. Thanks. If I could go back and change it all, I would. I, would. I think I'm going to miss you the most. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. So sorry. Maybe it's just a little moment. I could go back and change it all. I could go back. I would. But I can't. Jordan knows he shouldn't eat this entire bowl of nachos, but tonight he's earned that right. Because a few hours ago in the middle of happy hour, he recognized a sign. Not from the gods or a bolt of lightning, but from a double heart, a kissy face, and a fourth ha in ha ha ha. That's when Jordan knew he was buzzed. So when it was time to go, he got a ride home instead of driving. Be a legend like Jordan. Recognize your buzzed warning signs and get a ride home. Buzz driving is drunk driving.